Our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise becomes your house, your place, our praise becomes your house, your place, oh God. We sing a song and you come in, make a dance and you come in, shout your name and you come in, give you praise and you come in, sing a song and you come in, make a dance and you come in, shout your name and you come in, give you praise, oh you inhabit the praises of your people. Our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise becomes your house, your place, oh God. We sing a song and you come in. Make a dance and you come in, shout your name and you come in, give you praise and you come in, sing a song and you come in, make a dance and you come in, shout your name and you come in, give you praise, oh you inhabit the praises of your people, oh you inhabit the praises of your people. praises of your people oh you and happy the praises of your people oh. we sing a song and you come in make a dance and you come in shout your name and you Come in, give you praise and you come in, sing a song and you come in, make a dance and you come in, shout your name and you come in, give you praise and you come in, we sing a song and you come in, make a dance and you come in, shout your name and you come in, give you praise and you come in, sing a song and you come in, make a dance and you come in, shout your name and you come in, give you praise. praises of your people oh you inhabit the praises of your Hey family, welcome back this week. Once again, I'm glad that you are here. Uh, we are going to be in Colossians chapter 2. We're continuing on uh, in Colossians chapter 2. We're going to be in verses 16 through 19 uh, this week. Last week we talked about uh, Paul really 
focused more on the he- on the heresy that was a- addressed in the church. But but it's interesting as he talked about the heresy, he didn't necessarily nail down this is what's happening. This is the heresy here, 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 here. And because and you know that as you read commentaries and things on the book of Colossians, because they don't actually know that there's so much debate on exactly what the heresy is. And, and that's interesting because Paul is addressing this heresy without ever saying exactly what it is. And here's why he was able to do this. We saw that last week. Because his goal was not to point out how each heresy was wrong. His goal was point to Christ and how Christ is right and how Christ is truth and how what we need to do to, to recognize heresy and how to overcome heresy around us is we need to focus on Christ. We talked about last week how to recognize a counterfeit uh, counterfeit money. What they do is they, they put original, like they put real money in people's hands and let them feel it and let them touch it and let them see it. And the more you touch and feel and see real money, when fake money comes through, you know it, you recognize it, you see it. And so what Paul is, is basically saying the same thing for us what we need to do is we need to focus our lives on, on Christ. And last week we, we went back and pointed to the origination of that relationship that Christ Jesus, that he died, that he buried, that was buried, and that he arose, how baptism is a symbol of that in our lives. It's not, baptism doesn't save us. It's not us actually dying and rising. It is a symbol that what has happened in our lives is we have been buried with Christ and we have been raised again to newness of life. And baptism is a symbol of that. It's, it's, it's what has happened in our lives. And, and, and so we talked about how in order to, to know heresy, to know the truth, we need to focus on Christ, and, and it begins by focusing on what He has done in our life, that salvation is a work of Christ. It's not a work of man. It's not a work of anything that I have done. It's not a work of anything that you have done. You have not done anything to afford your own salvation. Christ has done all of that. He has, he has done all of it. And so if, if salvation is, if we come into Christ that way, and then the next question that I always get is, is now what? How do we move forward? I won't ever forget an opportunity I had to share the gospel with somebody who actually prayed to receive Christ. And I, I won't ever forget, God really convicted me because they prayed to receive Christ and immediately they said amen. And I began to tell them, okay, now you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do this. And then I stopped and God hit me and said, no, Grant, all they need to do is know me. Now, don't get me wrong. There are things that, that need to happen to help us grow. We do need to read our Bible. We do need to pray. We do need to uh, go to church and not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We need to do those things, but those things are not the focus. Those things can become human tradition, as we talked about last week, but separated from Christ, they're empty, it's empty deceit. What, what we have to do is focus our lives on Christ. And what he is doing. So, so what, what do we do from the point of salvation? How do we, we move forward from that? We're going to see that uh, tonight in what Paul writes. But he's really going back to say what he has said in, in chapter 2 verse 6. He says, just as you have received Christ, so walk in him. So just as, as our salvation is we receive Christ not as a work of our own, not as a work of ourselves, but all as a work of what he has done. We move forward, in our de- not, not in what we do, but we move forward by depending upon Him and, and Him working in our lives. We don't move forward by what I do. We don't move forward by me trying to be a good person. We don't move forward by me trying to do, step up the ladder and, and grow, grow because all that's going to do is, is lead to frustration because I, I'm a failure. But as I depend upon Christ and allow Him to move, progress the relationship. Just as I receive Him, so walk in Him. So he's going to say that, and he's going to address that in verses 16 through 19, only three verses. Uh, let's read those. Therefore, it's four verses actually. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you. In, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival, or a new moon, or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism, 
and worship of angels, going on in detail about visions, puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body, nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments, grows with a growth that is from God. So there's, there's two things here in moving forward that <clears throat> there's two commands, basically, that Paul gives. First, he says, let no one judge you. Second, he says, let no one disqualify you. So, so our growth is, we're going to look at those two tonight, and, and we're going to see what, what Paul is going to point out through these two things is, is spiritual growth comes from God through Christ. Salvation comes by grace through faith alone in Christ. Growth comes by grace through faith in Christ. Same thing. It, so often we get so confused and say, I've accepted Christ, now I need to do these things. No, we accept Christ and God needs to work in our lives and we need to get out of the way. Christ must be our focus and center. So how has Christ made a way for us to grow? That's our question. First of all, is there should be no judgment from men. Verse 16, therefore let no one pass judgment on you. So, so what judgments were being made at the church at Colossae? Well, two things I think were kind of going on. One is there, there was a judgment kind of from, from the Judaizers, from people who were saying, yeah, Jesus died for you, but first you've got to be a Jew. And so they were saying you need to keep the laws, and you've got to keep the laws, and you've got to keep the laws, and you've got to keep the laws. And if you don't keep the laws, then you can't be a Christian, and you've got to do this, and you've got to do this, and if you can't do this, then you, and that's not, it's by grace alone, not by the law then by grace. It's by grace alone. We're saved by grace alone and we grow by grace alone. Let, don't let anybody judge you on that. You are, you are saved by grace alone. Now you need to grow by, by grace alone. Then there's also this secular idea of philosophy of you need to receive this, this higher call that you, you, you need to be moved to this higher plane by, by doing these things and by stepping and by by all these secular things that were going, and Paul says, no. No, don't let anybody judge you on those things. What, what people should be judged on is, is, is their focus on Christ and their growth in Christ. Now, those are gonna, our growth in Christ is going to reveal itself in some ways in, in, in how we keep the law, but we don't keep the law to grow. Well, that's going to happen because we're, we're growing in our relationship with Christ. That's our focus. Our focus is not on keeping the law. Our focus is on growing in Christ, and then we're going to keep the law. Our, our focus is, is not on becoming this great wise mind. Our focus is Christ, and as we do that, He's going to point out truth to us, and we're going to know truth. Don't let nobody, don't let anyone judge you on these human standards, on these human things that you have to keep. But, but we need to focus on, on Christ. And he goes on and says, these, these, these human judgments, they are a shadow of things to come, but they are not the substance, but the substance belongs to Christ. <clears throat> when, I, when I read this verse, so often I think about uh, the, the Disney movie Peter Pan the, the cartoon remember where Peter Pan and, I, and it's not just in the cartoon but but I think about about Peter Pan the movie because in that he shows up the first time what's he doing he's chasing his shadow he, he's chasing his shadow but he can't catch it and he's having trouble with it and he he can't get it stuck back on him and all these things why because shadow's not real it, it's, it's not the real thing see the the law and these human judgments, they are not the real thing. They, they are shadows. The substance is Christ. So, so what that means for us is, is what I've already said. Our focus needs to be on the substance of Christ. If we're going to grow and move forward in salvation, just as we have received Christ, we are so going to walk in Him. If that's going to happen... If, if that's what's going to happen in our lives, we have to focus on Christ, knowing Him, growing in our relationship with Him. He is the substance. He is the meat. He is the real thing. And as we focus on Him, the shadow follows. So things we, we will live a life according to the law, but not because, but just because the shadow follows the real thing. 
Jesus, God gave us the law. He kept the law. He, he, Jesus, but it was imperfect because it wasn't the real thing. The real thing is Christ. And as we focus on Him, as we grow in our relationship with Him, the shadow follows. So, so what we got to do to grow and to move forward from our salvation is, is the same thing that we did to receive salvation. Depend on Christ. Focus on Him. He says, don't let anyone judge you by these human means. Second thing that he says, he goes on in verse 18, it says, let no one disqualify you. That's not good. Let no one disqualify you. So, again, it's let no one disqualify you based on these human things. He goes on to say what can disqualify you. Don't let no one in disqualify you insisting on asceticism, insisting on this, this very disciplined way of life that, that we think if we do these disciplined things, then we will be more spiritual and better. Asceticism apart from Christ means nothing. It is, as we talked about last week, it is empty deceit, and it will disqualify you. If you are counting on your asceticism to grow your relationship with Christ, you're missing it. Don't let no one disqualify you insisting on asceticism or insisting on worship of angels. Now, there's a lot of debate going on about, or in, in commentaries that you read about what he's talking about in worship of angels. Is he actually talking about worship of angels? Is he talking about worship of spiritual things? Here's what I'm going to say. Don't let anyone disqualify you because you think you are on a higher plane of spiritual calling. Listen. If, if your higher plane, if your higher plane has, has come because of what you do and it is a sense of pride in your life, you better be careful that you're not focusing on you and what you've done. You need to focus on Christ and what He's doing. This, he goes on to say that the worship of angels right there, going on in detail about visions from whom the whole body, about visions puffed up without reason in his sensuous mind. So he's saying the, he, people are, are getting puffed up about how, and, and arrogant about how awesome they are and, and, and how these visions that they're seeing and, and all these things. And, and, and when that's happening in our lives, that's not what Christ did. Don't let anybody disqualify you by saying, hey, you haven't had this vision. I have. Don't let anybody disqualify you by saying, yeah, but I have. I mean, and it can be good things. I've read the Bible through 800,000 times. Have you read it? What's happening sometimes, not all the time, there are awesome people who are growing in their relationship with Christ who have read the Bible 8,000 times. Fine. Great. But when it becomes a sense of pride of how awesome you are, then we're missing the point. The point is, in our lives, we should be glorifying Christ. And, and as, as long as we are doing that in our lives, there is nothing that can disqualify us. As long as we are growing in grace, just as we receive Christ, so we're growing in Him. As long as our focus is on Christ, upon knowing Him more, on growing in our relationship with Him. If He's doing the work, there's no pride in myself. There, there can be no pride in how awesome I am because God is doing the work in me. People can't disqualify me or what I've done because it's God working in me. When our focus becomes God, he, he, he says it, verse 19, and they're not holding fast, they're doing all these things, but they're not holding fast to the head. That is Christ. We've already talked about that. They're not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body is nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments grows with a growth that is from God. 
We have to be connected to the head, to Christ. And when our growth is coming through Him, people can't judge us on human means because our growth is coming from Christ. People can't disqualify us because of human goals and standards because we are connected to the head. We are connected to the substance, not the shadow. We are connected to the head. We, and, and it's the head that, that, that all strength of growth that connects joints and ligaments and all parts of our body. It is the head that does that. And, and the head, Jesus Christ, we have to focus on Him. As you receive Christ, so walk in Him. So if we don't want to be distracted by the heresies around us, the church at Colossae, if they don't want to be disqualified, if they don't want to be distracted by the heresies around them, what they have to do is make sure they are connected to the real thing through Christ's death and resurrection that brings reconciliation with our relationship with God. And once connected, they don't have to all of a sudden depend on their own strength to grow. As, they re as you receive Christ, so walk in Him. Focused on the substance, not the shadow. Focused on the head of the body. My challenge to us, church, is to not be distracted by all these things around us. In your personal life, focus on Christ. Know Him. Yeah, you know Him through His Word. You, you got to get in it. Yes, you know Him through prayer. Yes, you know Him through, through coming to church and going to Bible studies and going through having personal devotions. And those things are or how you know Him, but when they become the focus, it's wrong. We do those things because they, they are the shadow. They follow our connection with Christ. And this is how we know Him. Not things that sound good to us. You want to know the real Christ. you got to know Him through here. God, you're good. We love you. God, I pray that our lives will be focused on you. And we won't get distracted by the things around us. By the shadows, and by the imitations. But God, we'll know you. We'll focus on you. And you work in our lives. I pray that we'll be ever dependent upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good week.